when one looks back at the annals of golf in golden age, there are certainly names that pop straight out. Willie Park Jr., Harry Colt and James Braid all created stunning masterpieces in their own right. But as a rare golf course that can say they've had input by all three of these giants of the golden age. 600 feet above sea level, nestled away in the Chilton Hills above the town itself, sits Berkhamsted Golf Club. Founded in 1890, after Willie Park Jr. helped a local school teacher, George Gowring, to develop an initial nine-hole routing. It truly is one of England's Golden Age wonders. It may not be the first course you think of in London's commuter belt, but it's certainly one of the more unique. Sitting just 28 miles northwest of England's capital, Berkhamsted is, in many ways, the archetypal English golf club. A byproduct of the rapid expansion of the game as it travelled south from Scotland at the turn of the 19th century, and the heavyweight trifecta of the game's pioneering architects have a hand in its continuous development. The early involvement of Willie Park Jr. is unmistakable, and there is definitely more than just the occasional resemblance to Huntercombe around the course. Somewhere he would go on to develop around the same time as the old course at Sunningdale, only a few years later. Then there is the work of Harry Colt, who just like in the story of Sunningdale, would follow in the footsteps of Willie Park Jr. and was commissioned by the club in 1910 to expand the already popular nine hole routing to 18 holes. The routing that he left more closely resembles what we play today, using triangulation to create a variety of direction as it works its way round the Berkhamsted common land. Again, in keeping with the style of many of Colt's courses, the putting surfaces are relatively benign and offer the player a more straightforward two putt than his contemporaries might have thought necessary, such as the likes of Mackenzie or perhaps uh, Fowler and Simpson. And to complete the trifecta, the prolific great revisionist James Braid was tasked by the club in 1926 to further refine the work of Colt, endorsing the use of more mounding and adding more flair to the holes themselves. What he left is essentially what we play today, which is an incredibly rare time capsule of a golden age charm. Similar to Royal Ashdown Forest, the course is famous for its lack of bunkering, with the exception of the sand trap on the practice area, without question the most ironic bunker in golf, but that's the wrong way to view it. The way Berkhamsted uses the natural land is without doubt the defining feature of the course. The mounding around the green is extraordinary. Too often we think a golfer needs to be below the green, buried in sand to find difficulty scrambling for par, but the mounds of Berkhamsted fly in the face of that. Pin locations can leave the golfer well and truly humbled, demanding the full repertoire of shots around the green if you hope to score well. But it would be wrong to attribute this work to Colt and Braid alone. For over 25 years, CJ Gilbert acted as the chairman of Greens over the same time period as Colt and Braid in the early 1900s. And it is to Gilbert and his contemporaries that we owe thanks for the mounding that they crafted, much of it by hand. Then there's Grimm's Dyke, yet another unique feature of the land, an Anglo-Saxon gully that runs through the property which is seamlessly incorporated into the design to act as a deterrent off the tee and on the approaches, and comes into play on no less than seven holes. Berkhamsted is not a long course, the greens do not offer huge undulations, but it lures you into a false sense of security. Narrow from the tee with cross hazards in the form of Bracken and Grimsdyke, often acting as a natural boundary to the suitable layup distance. It makes you think about where you want to play your second shot from, rather than letting you go after it without restraint. The epitome of Berkhamsted is perhaps the tenth hole. You thread your drive to a suitable layup distance to give you the right angle and yardage to approach the small, protected green nestled behind an ancient ravine, 
it's not a long hole, but it keeps you completely engaged. Many golf clubs around the UK have found the temptation to change aspects of their course irresistible over time. Changes in the game have led to generations of committees up and down the land to seek to put their own unique stamp on the landscape, each looking to leave a lasting legacy, and often to the detriment of what the early Golden Age greats put in place for them, usually through the introduction of ponds, creeks, and of course, more often than not, bunkers. Berkhamstead has avoided these temptations, and as such, it means that very little has changed over the course since Braid left it in 1926, allowing this example of golden age design to be preserved as it was intended. This is the great legacy of Berkhamstead Golf Club. <laughs>